Um, thanks for asking me to be here and thanks for sharing your morning with me. Um, today we've heard quite a lot about recovery, um, but I'm going to talk about healing because I think the two are quite different and as a city and a country I think we need to think about both. So recovering is quite different from healing. Recovering requires hard work and sympathy and forgetting. Healing requires acceptance, letting go, empathy, and forgiveness. At least that's what I think it takes. I'm not really sure as I'm not quite there yet. As a city and as a nation, I think we're recovering, but we're not yet healing. We're working hard to forget the pain in Christchurch and forgetting makes it easier to recover. But it makes it impossible to heal because forgetting pain makes it hard to learn from it. We can only forgive mistakes if we learn from them. As a city and as a nation, I think we need to move from recovering to healing, from sympathy to empathy, and from forgetting to forgiving. For two years in Christchurch, we have survived, we've recovered. Uh, we're, many of us are forming a long-term relationship with pain, each in our own way. We've shoveled liquefaction, we've swept up broken glass time and time again. We've moved out of our homes for a week or a month or six months or 18 months or forever. We've fought with insurance, we've fed neighbors who could no longer feed themselves. We've lost jobs, we've lost homes. We've attended funerals. One of my friends lost 10 of her colleagues. Three of my friends lost both their legs. Three others lost the use of their legs. I nearly lost my left leg. I was millimeters away from a spinal injury and centimeters away from a brain injury. On February the 22nd, I was surrounded by death at its most gruesome. I've seen, heard, and felt the involuntary death throes of a 14-year-old boy, a 78-year-old woman, and 10 others in between. My leg, my hand, my hips, and my soul will never be the same. But we survive. We keep calm and we carry on. We stay strong, together and alone. Survival is a basic instinct. The thing is, there's more to healing than surviving. Healing a soul is a little bit like falling asleep. The harder you try, the further away you drift. Surviving requires us to forget the human pain of an earthquake. To survive, we have to be blind to the worst, to the ugliest, to the most horrific. Although misery is not a competition, the worst possible outcome in an earthquake is not death or losing a home. The most nightmarish is to be crushed by a building, trapped in darkness, and alone in the knowledge that this might well be it for you. Crushed, trapped, and alone, the sheer horror of it takes some time to get used to. It takes time to get over the revulsion, to accept, to empathize, and to be with that level of human pain. It's much easier to pretend away pain than to accept it. Pretending away pain is precisely what's required in order to say, as many have said time and time again, Oh, well, I survived those earthquakes just fine, but insurance, now that's just killing me. To compare insurance battles to being crushed, trapped, and alone demonstrates a profound forgetfulness of human pain and, dare I say it, a slight lack of empathy. Sympathy comes easily, instinctively. Empathy is harder and takes longer. To empathize, we have to put ourselves in another's shoes to imagine how we would feel if we were him or her. To empathize, we have to set aside that instinctive revulsion. We have to accept that destiny is not always kind, that the uncommon events have to actually happen once in a while. We have to accept that we tr those who we trusted to keep our streets safe failed. We have to accept that those we trusted to keep our streets sa safe and many times failed to even try. But above all, to empathize, we have to accept that nightmares can come true. And that's not an attractive prospect. A accepting it can make it hard to be productive in a day's work and even harder to sleep at night. Learning that nightmares can come true changes a person. 
It makes you lose faith in yourself and lose trust in the world. Right away, you build walls that protect you from the world, from the nightmares, and from yourself. You have no place in the world, and the world has no place in you. Such is the human toll of the earthquake, far beyond the death toll and broken homes. All across the city, we have selves that have ruptured from souls and detached from the world, from crushed, trapped, and alone, to detached and ruptured. Reestablishing ties between a self, a soul, and the world takes time. From what I can see, we're only just beginning. I've no idea how long it'll take, and I'm not even sure it'll happen. Two years on, we're discovering what comes after keeping calm and carrying on and surviving. To stay strong enough to withstand the never-ending terror of uncontrolled pain and uncontrollable, uncontrollable earthquakes, we have sealed away that pain behind an impregnable brick wall, leaving our souls there to die, just like that Edgar Allan Poe story where he buries a man alive behind layer upon layer of brick wall. To be strong, we have to forget that human pain and especially our own. But to heal, we have to remember, learn, grow, and forgive. To heal, we have to stop forgetting and feel. So healing a soul requires allowing ourselves to feel that pain. Healing as a nation requires the same. We must learn from the mis mistakes that killed and injured so many. We must forgive, but not forget. I'm not sure how many of you have read the government's proposed changes to building codes for the quake-prone buildings. Um, but to me, it seems like in these new proposed building codes, the government is doing more forgetting than forgiving, and certainly doing more forgetting than learning. Parapets and pain, that's what I have to say about the Ministry of Everything's proposed changes to these quite prone building rules. The Royal Commission on Canterbury Earthquakes recommended fixing parapets and brick buildings, especially facades, uh, within seven years. So they put, they recommended putting parapets and brick buildings in a separate category to go first, just like CIRA is putting the most vulnerable people in a separate category to go first. The ministry proposes allowing 15 years to fix uh, brick buildings, and they're silent on parapets. So parapets are not a part of the ministry's plan. And those precariously perched parapets killed and injured many around the streets of Christchurch. 35 were killed by brick buildings, um, outside brick buildings. Four were killed inside brick buildings. And just to compare, in LA, I was in LA in 94, um, there were 42 deaths in all of LA in an earthquake. It was a 6.8, and the peak ground acceleration was pretty close to R2.2. I think it was about 1.7. So. The death toll in LA was similar to just our death toll from brick buildings, and San Francisco was also similar. Um, yet, we're not really following the advice of the Royal Commission. And why bother having a Royal Commission if we don't follow their advice? Leaving these um, brick buildings and uh, precarious parapets unregulated for 15 more years is murderously reckless. It's also evidence that we've recovered, but not yet healed. We can sympathize, but not yet empathize. The government is asking how much it'll cost to fix the buildings, which is a reasonable question, but it's the wrong question to be asking. The cost of, of reinforcing buildings is the question that you'll ask if you look at it through a lens of sympathy through a lens of, oh, gee, well, that's really sort of bad luck that you got crushed by a building. We wish it hadn't happened, of course, but these things happen. Unpredictable events do happen. We have to accept that. What we should be asking is how much it will cost not to fix the buildings, how much it will cost to delay fixing the buildings. If we look at building codes through a lens of empathy, we will embrace the memory of human pain 
and we will embrace the knowledge that nightmares can come true. Then, and only then, we'll see the human cost of leaving the most dangerous buildings unrepaired and unregulated for 15 more years. And we'll see who pays the cost of those ruptured souls and severed selves. In time, something will happen to these quake-prone buildings all around the country. Either we'll pay to reinforce them now, or they'll crumble in the next earthquake, which Kelvin <laughs> kindly pointed out that there, it's quite likely. So whether we pay reinforcement costs now or health costs later, either way we'll pay. So let's pay dollars now rather than human pain later. In order to heal, we need to feel the pain of fessing up that deaths in the streets are not normal in a country like New Zealand. We didn't see death on that scale in California in either 89 or 94, nowhere close, and for cities much larger than Christchurch. It wasn't the earthquake that killed and injured so many. It was the buildings, their lack of regulation, lack of structural support, and in our case, lack of offense. It's not okay. It wasn't bad luck. She will not be right. And we can forgive this, but let us not forget. To heal as a nation, we need to fix the dangerous buildings or bring them down now, not in 15 years' time. Let us never again subsidize risk with human pain. If and when Christchurch heals, I hope the city will be a testament to all that we've lost, to all that we have found, to all that we will miss, and to all that we have to look forward to. I hope Christchurch remembers its pain, celebrates its heroism, remembers its deaths, and celebrates its rebirth. May we rise from the ashes while honoring the souls within those ashes. Thank you.